everyone, I hope you're well. For some reason it's taking me ages just to get settled and actually start this video, but I'm doing it now. This is going to be a haul of all the lovely bits, not all the lovely bits, but like most of the lovely bits that I got from Uganda. Uh, I ended up picking up quite a few things. I've also got like a few other things that I bought before I went to Uganda and a couple of things that I bought like from the body shop that I thought I'd share as well just cuz so it's like a collective haul um, okay so first of all I'll start off with clothing I actually bought some material I think it was six yards and um, my mom, I bought it because my mom said that she wanted to she wanted me to make her dress and um, yeah I just picked out a piece of material whatsapped a couple of options to my mom it was a bit of a bad signal at that time so when she got back to me no so she didn't see the photo so I, I was kind of in a rush so I just chose it it ended up being the one that she actually wanted that was really good so with that six yards I've made, managed to make my, myself a dress as well and I call this my safari dress I just posted an outfit of the day of it and it's just me back in England wearing it. I should have probably done one when I was in Uganda but I actually never ended up wearing this while I was in Uganda. So this is my safari dress, it's actually not buttoned up at the moment. And I made my mum a free wear dress. I took it to the tailors to, to make. So it's just, what I told them to do is to make the buttons go down the middle. So the buttons are like this, there. I don't even know how she did it, but I think this, they have button machines where they can just kind of clamp stuff on. And then it's got a bit of elastic around the middle, just to kind of give you a little bit of shape because it's quite a loose dress. And then I, because these buttons go quite high, what I do is I just wear it a little bit open like that. And then the back is uh, not so low, but I told them to make it a little bit low, not so high up on the neck. And that's the only piece of clothing, that's the only piece of clothing that I bought, but I did buy lots of African material. I think I have like six. I took a picture on my phone so I can like give you a little sneak preview because I don't have them with me. They were so heavy. That's just a preview of them on my phone. But then I bought loads of shoes, like loads of African sandals. The first pair that I bought for myself were these. And these I got in Kabalagala. <laughs> but I don't know if any of you know what Kabalagala is, but it's a place, it's a kind of banana, I think. And it's a place as well in Kampala. So yeah, I got them in Kabalagala because I need, I really needed a pair of sandals to wear one day for a function. I didn't have anything. I had my old Primark sandals and I had gone, it rained that same day and it was so dusty. I had gotten a border, but I had been on a border border for a whole hour to and fro where um, I was picking my clothes up from. So I just needed a new pair and found these. And they're quite blingy, they're quite, if you can see, they're quite blingy, blingy. But, um, I just like them, I just thought they were quite African. The second pair I bought were in, was in Kampala, and I was just looking around for hard drives, because I really wanted to back up all my photos, all my pictures and everything, just in case anything happened. And as I was looking, I ended up coming across this shop, which was selling sandals. So, I picked up these ones, and they look like this. I've worn them quite a bit. You have flowers and just nice colours, some of my favourite colours, basically green, purple and orange. The leather stuff's really cheap, it's like, equates to usually five, six pounds, where well, the other stuff is quite expensive. So, I got quite a few, not a few of them, I got a couple of them. And then I got a pair of these, which I got in Gulu, and they're black sandals. I just saw a guy selling them on the street, so I ended up buying a few pairs of him. But one for myself. And then a couple for my sisters. These ones are like that. And I love the way they make my feet look. I love the shape of it. It just elongates. Yeah, this you can just really tell that these are African sandals. So it's just something different. I think maybe they're made in Uganda. Mm. Most of the time, it stuff, the stuff is actually made in, say, Tanzania. And then the final pair, I actually wanted to get something bright and colourful and outstanding so I ended up getting uh, going to the craft market craft shops on uh, Buganda Road uh, towards the end of my state and looking for and looking for sandals and other things that I could bring back and give as gifts for people so I got 
these ones, I'd, I'd seen them right from the start, um, but I didn't buy them, I just kind of wanted to look around and see what else there was. But then I always had this in the back of my mind that I want to go back and get those green sandals. The triangular shape. So any shop I'd go in, I'd be like, oh, do you... And they, they try and sell you things, they're trying to, oh, this one's good, this one's good, this one's good. They try and sell you stuff. But I was like, do you have the green sandals with the triangular shape? And sometimes they have these, but in a different colour. So I was like, oh, they like that, but they're green. And they're like, sometimes they're like, yeah, we can get them. Or sometimes they're like, no, we can't get them. Or whatever. But yeah, I got these ones, and they're like this, and I really do like them. Like, once again, I love the shape they give, and generally the colour and design. I'm just going to show you the earrings I got. I'm actually wearing a pair. This is the first pair I got, and once again, I got it from Kabbalah Gala the same day I got those other ones. <clears throat> and I showed my cousin, and she was like, oh, you could have got them from the craft shop. I thought the craft shop would have been more expensive because it's a touristy place, but you can get some really good cheap stuff there. Really like them. Once again, hidden under my ears, like that. And I got much. I got quite a few more, but I've really given out quite. I've really given out some to friends. Um, and some of these I just haven't worn yet. So I got this first pair, like this. Obviously, I can't show you the ones I've given to people, but you get a rough idea of kind of the stuff that I got. Got some of these. I got these squarish ones. Look, they look, you see, see them from the back like that. And then I got these ones as well, which I love. I love this shape. And then the ones that I've kind of shown you are these circular ones like that. I actually got lots and lots of purses because I really want to give them out as gifts and just generally just give them out to people and have them for myself and use for kind of little makeup bits and you know general stuff uh, there's this one here it's made really I've actually got stuff in this one so I better not leave it before when I'm going out um, just kind of like little things that I put in and then I got a few other purses um, there's this first one like that this other one like that there's this one, and then there's this one, same both sides. This one, pretty much the same as well, and this one. I love them all, I especially love the texture on this, the way they've sewn it. Just like this little black lining inside. Oh, love it. And then I really, really wanted a toilet bag, so I just kind of put it on my wish list. Yeah, just a normal toilet bag blue lining because I had my eyes on these um, I kind of knew the price and it's like I think 10,000 shillings that's like what two pound fifty those are the, these American people some I think sisters and then a mum uh, and she bought like three but she bought the but the people in the craft shop told her it was like 20,000 shillings which is about five pounds I don't know how much it is in dollars now that's actually a really good deal but um, then the girl afterwards realised that she'd been cheated and um, she was she couldn't remember the shop that she went to um, if, if she took it back I don't think they would have given her a refund either um, but when she was buying them she, I think she thought she was getting a really good deal which it is but she still got cheated like if you're white sometimes you end up getting um, cheated for prices like for example I went on safari a couple of times and we paid the local price, like because I'm black and because of course I look Ugandan. But if you're white, then usually you get charged Muzungu price. And Muzungu means kind of like white person or, you know, I don't know, white person, I think. So even though I wasn't born in Uganda, I haven't lived there, I'm not really local. I am Ugandan. Um, I just made sure. Keep quiet and let somebody else do the talking and I got the local price. But yeah, that was one of the advantages of, be of being a tourist in your own country. Another thing that I bought are these rings. I got quite a few of these bone rings. These, apparently they're made of cow horns. You know, the big cow horns. Um, I'm sorry to you guys who actually are, don't support animal killing, but people eat the meat for beef and things anyway, so they just kind of make use of the horns once they're killed and this is the ring that apparently it's made of I didn't know it was I didn't know cow horn, cow horn I didn't know cow horn was moldable or could be molded like that or bent but clearly it can 
and then I have this other one which is like this like that I'm not gonna bother adjusting the, the um, lens so but today I'm not wearing this one I'm wearing the yellowish one and I think I've got like two or three other ones as well but I just don't have them on me at the moment and so I got a few other things like gifts for my brothers and I forgot to give it to them actually straight away yeah I need to actually give it to them these are just like some pens I think they're made of ebony and you know how you get biros and you get that little bit in the middle you take it out and you put it in here and you can use this as well. and then it's basically a pen so they have different kinds of heads this one I think is like a, it might be a giraffe <laughs> it has a very long trunk it's an elephant I have no idea what this one is. This one is some kind of dragon. I really don't know what this is. This one's definitely a lion on top. Yeah, so they have different animals on top. And then I came across a couple of kitchen things and just like a few home things. So I just got some spoons. These are little cute spoons that you can just use like to eat your cereal or whatever. Just four of them. And then I also found some other big spoons to like make salad and I got these ones so you can mingle and I got some darker brown ones like this they've kind of got rubber band marks on them uh, but these ones are just pure wood there's none of that bone or cow horn whatever it is they show like a little animal or thing on top and just this just normal salad spoons but except they're really wide and then I got some candle holders like this uh, these are not actually Ugandan I think these are Kenyan they're like the Maasai and I love candles I love lighting candles so I just couldn't resist I just couldn't resist I think they're made of tusk which is unfortunate for the cow but if the meat is going to be used the horn might as well be used as well and actually you can see that I've actually been burning candles I can't remember what candle it is but it's really nice and then I got this little bicycle. It's got like a cow on it. Um, somebody at the back holding a cow. And then this man at the front. And in Uganda, they have border borders. I don't know if you've heard of them, but they're local transport and they're motorbikes. And they're pretty much everywhere. And they carry anything. They carry matoke. If you know what matoke is, it's like a green banana that you cook. They carry computers, beds, uh, cows, goats those big stacks of hay that you use to sweep anything you could find on the back of a border riding along so I really like that but uh, my housemate really liked it too I decided to give it to her because she loves she loves biking and loves to cycle everywhere actually I decided to give it to her before she said that she liked it but then when she said she liked it I was like yeah actually I was gonna give it to you and then I got a few other things that can basically I can hang up and frame and put around the house they're these paintings kind of painted on fabric these first ones are of zebras I think there's four zebras here I haven't got them framed yet but I really do want to get them framed and put up I thought this was just typically Ugandan so I just had to get it Matoke these two people carrying are they carrying Matoke or are they just walking past a Matoke tree well there's Matoke in the background and then they're just walking and this woman's got her baby on the back so I really like that that one's a long one portrait one of my favorites so bright and happy it's these giraffes and they're just they've got their necks a little bit entwined and it's just so bright I love it and then this other one I really liked as well the sunset yeah and then I have a few cosmetics um, the first thing is these perfumes Kaiba here it is I don't even know is it even men's or is it women's I have no idea but it's a lot it's a heck of a lot it's 36 mils is it 36 mils 100 mil this is 100 mil it's got a bit of a musky sweet smell and so I just wanted a perfume because I didn't take any perfume with me to Uganda what did I take? I took one body spray from Body Shop. I just decided, now nah, I'm not going to take any perfume. I don't know why, I should have taken more going out clothes, more heels, more jewellery, more dresses. I didn't have that many like going out dresses. I kind of had like, not many, like two or three or four. Not many. Kaiba perfume. Maybe if you know, you can tell me if this is even men's or women's. But I wear it. 
Ooh, that was a big spray. But I just wanted something to make me more fragrant. Although usually lotion is enough. I have, I bought this other one. It's called Sinfonia. I don't think these are Ugandan things. They just, they, I just bought them from Uganda. So this one's like more of a fresh, a fresh sweet smell. And then I got some pharmacy products. These are, I noticed this brand is quite popular in Uganda and I think it's a Turkish brand. It is a Turkish brand. And this one's a body scrub. It's lime and I've used that like one or two times. And the other pharmacy product is something I saw in Uchumi. I don't know if you know, Uchumi is like a supermarket where you can get food, hot food, you can get things on the shelf, just a general supermarket basically, but they do hot food as well. I bought this, this body lotion and it smells really, really nice. It actually reminds me of something I've used before. And of course, I am a fan of um, pedicures and manicures, well, mainly pedicures, because not because I love doing pedicures, but like, I have to scrub my feet, like feet get hard, so I just have to scrub it. And I usually use a ped egg, I kind of just buy a ped egg every few couple of months, like the cheap ones. Just bought a new ped egg but it scratched me because it was too sharp. Got this from Uganda, this is like a volcanic rock. My auntie told me about these. And yeah, I mean it works, generally it works. I bought two of these but I only have one with me at the moment and you just scrub scrub I didn't know which one to choose because there were so many so many rocks to choose from I didn't know which one would be good or which one would be not good then I was like to the woman you tell me you tell me which one is a good rock it's got quite a lot of holes in it like that and the final thing is probably one of my favorite things and it's in this little tub guess what it is it's sheer butter this is sheer butter and you can see that this was packed to the top when I first came. Now it's like down to here. That's down to here. I'm trying to just save it. I don't want to use it. I don't want to use it too much. This sheer butter comes from either, okay, I'm not too sure now. This sheer butter comes from either like the Sudan or South Sudan or some somewhere in Northern Uganda, between Northern Uganda and South Sudan. Now, some people in my family are doing some sheer butter projects. So they're collecting sheer butter, um, not physically themselves, but they're doing some projects to collect, to collect sheer butters. Basically, he gave me and my friend some sheer butter. I just love it, it's thick. I just, bleh. I love this sheer butter. And I haven't used it on my hair yet. Next year when I go to Uganda, I'm just gonna collect so much sheer butter, probably like 10, 10 of these because this would be really expensive here but um, my mum says that she's been using shea butter on her hair and it makes it really nice and really soft so I might try using it on my hair as well and with this shea butter I've been using it on my face because I'm actually doing um, trying out salicylic acid and sal salicylic acid peel so I've been trying I've done what I did it once last week and they say you need to keep your face moisturized and I thought shea butter will be quite good for that um, Honestly, I'm sick and tired of not having like clear, clear skin. So I've decided I'm just going to try a few more things. So I'm just trying this salicylic acid using glycolic acid in between and moisturizing with shea butter. And if I, I take a little bit like that, that goes a long way to moisturize my whole face. So shea butter is multi-purpose, like it's really, really good. Natural product. You can even eat it. Like in Uganda, they call it moya, but it, for some reason, the moya it comes in a liquid form. So I don't know the, I don't know at what stage it's at when they have it liquid. But usually with moya, they they put it in um what do they put it on? They put it on their food. It's safe to eat because it's a natural thing and it grows on a tree. So yeah. And so those are pretty much the things I got from Uganda. I got a couple of things before I went to Uganda and I'm not sure if I showed these lip liners I actually got this lip liner cherry and I love it especially with um, Ruby Woo like that I got the cherry and the chestnut lip liner chestnut I use with um, Amorous which I'm wearing today and Amorous is a pinky color by MAC so I did pop into Superdrug as I always do and I found that um, Revlon was having a 2 for 10 pounds uh, sale so I actually got this Revlon Colorstay Ultimate Suede Lipstick and it reminds me of Paramount so quite close in colour if you can see in fact let me try and do a little swatch 
So Revlon Color Stay is at the top and Paramount is at the bottom. And I also, for the first time, at last, basically, I'm trying Revlon's Just Bitten Kissable Lip Balm Stains, Prush Berguin 005. It smells quite minty. I just like it for that little bit of color. If I need a bit of moisture, um, just popping out, I'm just going to the gym or whatever, I'll just use this. Then of course I went to Body Shop and they were having some offers there. I think it was £6.50 for a body butter and I always kind of take advantage of that. So I got one in Sweet Pea. It's a duo texture um, one. So you can, on this side it's the really whipped uh, light texture one and this one it's just a really thick, thick texture. It's got a really fresh flowery smell to it. And I've never tried it before and I haven't used orange for a while. This one's, uh, is it Clementine? What do they call it? Satsuma. It's a really, really strong smell, but I really like it. If they're on offer, I usually get one from my mum as well. So I got her the Moringa. And I got some cleansers from Body Shop as well. I think there were three for two. I've got the Vitamin E Cleanser, Cream Cleanser. I've got the Seaweed Purifying Cleanser. I actually have a few other product products from the Seaweed line. And then I got the Pomegranate softening cream cleanser that is pretty much it that has been quite a long haul i didn't even realize how long it would be i didn't think it would be this long i'm gonna have to apologize once again for my inconsistency it's not good i know i know what's so hard about that i don't know it's just the thing of actually getting myself to this point where i'm sitting in front of the camera i've got it set up it's in focus just do it. That's it really. I've actually missed out a lot of things that I've bought. But I did buy this top from Primark. And it's just like one of those... Should I stand up for it? But it's really got like a really soft material. Um, what do you call this? I think you call it chiffon. It's quite flowy and it's just... It's simple. So I think you can still find it in Primark. Um, the hair that you saw in my last video, that this is the same hair. But the, but the hair you saw in the video before, where I was sitting down and talking, that was actually different hair. After that, I got my hair done again. In the same style, probably a little bit lighter, a little bit bigger. This is brown instead, and the other one was black and... Black and red. Is this red or is this ginger? It's kind of like red, auburn... So while I was in Uganda, I got my hair done twice. I was like, I have to make sure, I have to make sure I come back with fresh hair, like with a different, I have to come and make sure I have come back with fresh hair because I don't want to have to start doing my hair straight away as I come back. I want to enjoy my Ugandan hairstyle for as long as possible. So I just thought, let me just do my hair the day before I come or like on the day I fly back. And I really love this hair. I cut the ends so that they're a little bit blunt and they come up really straight like when my hair is down. First I was like to the hairdresser, I don't want my hair to be blunt. Can you stretch it out and do it? So I ended up doing all the separating, all the stretching. I ended up handing them every single braid. And at one point I ended up with six people working on my, like, working on my hair. I went to the hairdresser about one or two. They finished around seven or eight. So I literally turned up, rocked up, had them undo it, wash it put it back in braids and that happened, finished within about six hours but I was in pain I was in so 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 much pain I was in so much pain I wish I went with my hair already washed conditioned oiled and stretched because I I think that would contributed to the problem even the men jumped in when it came to undoing the braids even the men jumped in there was like they were surrounding me like <laughs> taking the braids out I was just in pain and they would, the worst thing was that they were not listening to what I was saying. I was like, I'm in pain, I'm suffering. <laughs> I'm suffering. And they're like, oh, sorry, babe. And leave comments below. Remember to like, to comment, to subscribe, to share. Anything you want to do, just do it. And I will see you in my next video. Now you can actually follow me. You can actually go and follow me on Instagram. And I'll try and post there. You know, I'm not so brilliant with social media. I'm just not that kind of online socialite so if you want to support me you can go and you can share my links bye guys